What is up guys, JT Tapis with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. And today I'm coming at you with one of the things that I like to speak about most, and that is how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off, and even more important than that, how to actually make it into a lifestyle. But before we actually get into any of those things, today we wanna to speak about how to know if you're addicted to food or not. Maybe you tried all the fad diets available to mankind, and you have never been able to lose the weight. More importantly, you haven't been able to sustain the weight loss. Or maybe you have simply given up on the idea of getting healthy based on your previous bad experiences with dieting. You know the problem. You know that you need to diet. <laughs> you know fasting is needed. You know what to do, and maybe you have done it. You have failed repeatedly, and you get cravings, can't function, you think you have no discipline, no self-control. In other words, you feel like you're flawed, right? Also, when you've tried these diets, you have felt headaches, chills, mental fog, disorientation, sweats, anxiety, poor performance, irritability, depression, your relationships suffer, your wife, husband wants to kick you out of the house. You think your sugar levels drop and you feel better right after eating a surplus of calories. And then of course, it's all over and the perpetual cycle starts all over again. You feel guilty, ashamed, self-loathing, you isolate yourself. My friend, most addicts experience the same withdrawal and shameful symptoms. There are many different types of addictions out there. We, we know the common ones, right? The, the ones that are easy to point out, the drugs, the alcohol, the cigarettes, the pornography, being a workaholic. There's also something we call poly addictions, meaning we have a combination of two or more addictions at once. That's a difficult one. The intriguing and unsettling fact is that these addictions serve as gateways to other addictions. They come on very quickly and frequently and these addictions piggyback off of each other. So for example, alcoholism transforms into a drug addiction. Drug addiction oftentimes leads people to promiscuity and the cycle expands and some of these uh, people have two or more of these addictions going on at the same exact time. What's even more surprising is that prior to these severe, very common addictions, there is possibly an addiction to food. This means that a person that is addicted to food might be opening the floodgates to other addictions in their life. I believe that the ultimate cause of these addictions are just a desperate cry of the heart. It's the way humans try to alleviate some of the tension, adversity that's steering in their hearts. It's, it's the way we find crutches to deal with the, the friction of life. I'm encouraged though by the fact that children who were taught proper nutrition at a young age learn self-control and discipline. A person who can tame their hunger oftentimes has self-control and can tame other urges in their life. In other words, the ability to control our hunger impulses at a young age can profoundly impact discipline and self-control throughout our lives. So my question to you is, are you addicted? Here are seven ways to assess food addiction. Number one, are you secretly eating? Number two, do you crave junk food all the time? Number three, are you lying to your coaches? Number four, are you moody because of food? Number five, are you having bursts of anger and rage? In other words, are you just freaking out for no for no reason. I mean, I know you're on a diet and I know that you probably wanna go eat other things, but you know what I mean? You get into arguments for no reason, right? You're stirred up really quickly over nothing. You are uh, having depression. You, you're experiencing depression, right? You have those feelings of depression where it's just a perpetual cycle. You can't stop thinking about things. Uh, you have ideas of doom and gloom and you just feel like you're in the pit and you're never gonna be able to get out. And that's affecting all areas of your life and so you're experiencing some depression. And lastly, number seven, are you experiencing insomnia? Because Not because you're hungry, because you're on a diet, but more importantly, you've had all your nutrients, you feel uh, you know, like you've had all the nutrients you need, but yet you're having a harder time going to bed. If you've experienced any of these symptoms, my friend, most likely you are addicted to food. And if you're addicted to food, that doesn't mean that that's a, a death sentence. That doesn't mean that you can't overcome this. That doesn't mean that one day you won't be able to lose the weight and keep it off and actually make this into a lifestyle and be released from the bonds 
of food addiction. Many people are addicted to food. As a matter of fact, I believe that 97, 98% of people are addicted to food to some extent, even people that are skinny. That's right. They're using food as a crutch to alleviate some of the friction, some of the adversity of life, and they're using food to do that. And maybe it's not reflecting on their body. They don't look like they're overweight. You can't see it on their waistline, but you see that the minute they enter any kind of friction or any up or down emotion, they're reaching for food. That's called food addiction. You're addicted to food because it's leaking. Uh, are, are you eating? So how do we overcome it? I truly believe that first and foremost, we need to identify and we need to recognize that we have an issue, right? Number one is we need to recognize that we have a challenge. Number two, we got to get real with ourselves. Right? We have to really come to grips with the idea, I have a problem and I'm willing to do something about it. And the truth is that I know most people won't do something about it until it's painful, until something is broken. Maybe you go to a doctor's appointment and the doctor says, hey, um, you know, if you don't start doing X, Y, Z, you're going to end up taking medication or this is going to happen or that's going to happen. Or maybe you need to change your lifestyle because otherwise you have two or three months to live or maybe two or three years to live. That really hits you hard and you're ready to make a change. Number three, once you have recognized the challenge, once you have done some introspection and you know you're ready to truly change, then you need to find the right path. And there are many paths out there, especially here in America. We have all the different sprint strategies, right? All the fad diets the keto, the Atkins, the South Beach, the macro counting, the calorie counting. And don't get me wrong, these approaches are good approaches, right? If you follow the plan, you're gonna lose the weight. Here's the big challenge I have with sprint strategies or fat bats. The big challenge I have with those is that those programs simply and strictly deal with nutrition dynamics, which are needed, but they're not the end all duo. Because I believe the big challenge ultimately is in your head and in your heart. And until it doesn't click, and until you don't find a program that actually deals with the cognitive processes of nutrition, and, and you can really, really understand what is happening and why you're reacting to the cues, the triggers out there that are actually tempting you to the food, until you understand that, you can't really do anything about it. Rules have never changed anyone. That's why I believe that all these sprint strategies, all these fad diets are great, but they only work to a certain extent. What really needs to happen is an interdisciplinary approach to nutrition. You have to address the mind, which addresses the emotions. The emotions address the actions and those actions are consistent. You create good habits. If those are good habits. You create a good character. And from there, you actually take control. And now those dynamics actually are powerful. But until that happens, my friend, you're just going to be stuck in a perpetual cycle of yo-yo dieting, getting frustrated with yourself, thinking you're flawed, that you're not disciplined, that you're not self-control. You're gonna go into these rages of you know self-loathing, isolation. You already know, you, you've been through this many, many, many different times. And so if you're addicted to food, remember, you need to address the problem. You need to realize you have a problem, right? You need to do some introspection and ask yourself the question, am I ready in my heart of hearts? Am I sick and tired of being sick and tired? Who else am I affecting? Because guess what? Your choices are affecting other people, not just yourself, but your family and those around you. And then number three, you have to figure out what the strategy is for you, right? And so within our program, the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan, we have three systematic steps that address that what I was talking about, the interdisciplinary approach, which is the mind, right? The emotions, the actions, and then of course the dynamics. We split that up in an 80-20. 80% of our process has to do with the cognitive processes. 20% has to do with dieting mechanics because that's needed. Eat this, don't eat that, right? Now, we don't demonize certain food groups like a lot of those other sprint strategies that tell you, oh, fruit is bad or carbs are bad or this is bad. No, we utilize some of those strategies for a period of time, but then we go back to incorporating all macronutrients because we believe all foods are good within portion depending on what you're trying to do, what your outcome is. And so we don't demonize foods. And I think that that is one of the best approaches. So we go into a conservative phase, we go into a not so conservative phase, and then we go into a phase of freedom because we want you to practice that word that has been overused and possibly not used in the best way, which is intuitive eating. Intuitive eating can't happen until you actually gain control of your hunger cues, right? You can't just get off the couch and be covered in Dorito dust and think you're gonna go do 
intuitive eating and that it's gonna work for you. You have to grab hold of your hunger cues and you have to understand what that is. More importantly, you have to understand what's happening in your mind and your heart so that the actions that come from there are sustainable. And so my friend, as you hear me here pleading with you, if, if you're addicted to food, if you have looked at these different points, the seven different points, which I'm gonna repeat here in a second because I think it's really important for you to assess and you know, you understand, and that you understand whether you're addicted to food or not. Number one, are you secretly eating? Number two, are you eating bad food and, and, and you feel great when you eat it and you're seeking like junk food all the time? Number three, are you lying to your accountability uh, partners, your coaches? Number four, are you moody? Number five, are you having bursts of anger and rage? Number six, are you experiencing depression? And number seven, are you staying up at night just because you miss all the sweets and all the things that you used to eat when, whenever you go into some kind of binding mechanism, AKA a diet. My friend, if you've resonated with any of those, just know that there's hope and you need a systematic approach to address your actions. So I hope that not only have you resonated with some of these things, but I hope you put it into action. I hope that you actually either reach out to us, join one of our programs, or you find something that does specifically that, that has an interdisciplinary approach to nutrition, something that addresses the mind, something that addresses your emotions, something that actually systematically shows you how to make this into a lifestyle. And if you do that, my friend, you will overcome emotional eating, binge eating, overeating, and your addiction to food. And if you've been in this cycle, then I know that this brings a lot of encouragement to you. And remember that uh, motivation only lasts for a little bit, right? Um, emotions are fleeting. And uh, I believe that success likes uh, action and it likes uh, speed. And so if you're resonating, if you've resonated with this, leave a comment down below. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you got value out of this video, please hit a like. If we're not family yet, you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so so we can stay in touch. I enjoy speaking about things that edify the mind, the body, and the spirit. And today we spoke about the addiction to food. Are you addicted to food or not? How to, how to know if you're addicted to food? And uh, I hope you get something out of this. More importantly, I hope you take action. My name is JT Tapis with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.